I would like to discuss a particular form of autism today. The term autism is used to describe a broad range of medical conditions from very severe disabilities with quite low IQ, epilepsy, and birth defects to much milder conditions with a normal physical examination and a normal IQ. I will focus on the very mild end of this spectrum and particularly on children who appear completely normal in uh, every way through the first uh, six to nine months of age. In 2012, we described a new genetic condition in which a gene on the X chromosome was inactivated, blocking the ability of the body to synthesize carnitine. Carnitine is a nutrient that is very abundant in red meat, but nearly absent in fruits, cereals, and vegetables. Further studies have suggested that this TMLHE deficiency is a risk factor for autism, but that there is only a 3% chance that a male born with this abnormality will develop autism versus a 97% chance that they will grow up to be a normal uh, adult male. The children with this condition looked perfectly normal in facial appearance. I would like to show a brief video of a patient typifying this type of autism he is a boy who uh, looks generally entirely normal and engaging at about nine months of age. In recent years, the diagnosis of autism has shown startling growth, now affecting one in 110 American children. For over two decades, parents desperate for answers and feeling slighted by the medical community have felt forced to create services for their children, raise money for research, and to campaign for wider awareness of autism and for support from the government. Today the picture is changing. Researchers now believe there is no simple genetic cause, that autism may involve multiple genetic pathways, and toxic materials in the environment may trigger the symptoms of autism. Autism once was considered only a brain disorder. Now more doctors say it often involves serious physical illness. And that's our first story tonight. Frankly, I have a personal motive in telling it because it's about my grandson, Nick, who is six and lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's not easy connecting with Nick. We live in different cities. Hi, hey, Nick. How are you? All my grandchildren are a little shy when we first meet again. Nice to see you. But Nick's shyness is different. One of the marks of autism is difficulty making eye contact and communicating even with family members. So, how are you doing? I've been a reporter on and off for 50 years, but I've never brought my family into a story. <coughs> until Nick, because he moves me deeply. Should we go and look at the ducks? Also, because I think his story can Good help hour. people Thanks. understand his form of autism and help me understand it better. This was Nick when he was nine months old, a healthy, alert and engaged baby with no apparent medical problems. <laughs> now at six, my grandson seems like a different child, showing the classic symptoms of autism, a disorder in development. His difficulty connecting. Can I, can I read that one for you? Do you want to look at it yourself? We are proposing that 10 to 20% of all autism might be caused by development of carnitine deficiency in the brain. Another feature may be that what we term regression in skills. This might be as subtle as having a social smile and playfulness at six to nine months of age, and then losing this skill as was shown in the previous video. Sometimes the regression or loss of skills occurs later and is, is more dramatic. Now I would like to show you a video uh, from a mother with a boy with TMLHE deficiency, very low plasma carnitine levels, and more drastic episodes of regression. The first uh, episode of regression that he experienced was uh, when he was about two years and nine months. Um, at that point, he had a diagnosis of PDD-NOS, which is a milder form of autism. Uh, so he was speaking in two to three word phrases. Um, he went to a regular school. Um, he was really doing pretty well, I would say. Um, for the untrained eye, you really couldn't tell that he was autistic. Um, so at that point, we um, decided to take him, um, I actually took him and my daughter overseas to visit family. 
it was just this very rapid uh, downhill spiral where, um, I mean, by the time my husband came back, he was a completely different child. He was, um, uh, he, not only did he lose the speech, uh, this time the regression was more severe. He lost um, coordination, he lost uh, fine motor skills, uh, he became extremely sensory seeking. I'm using the term hypothesis a lot. Um, a medical, medical hypothesis is an idea about how some disease process might be working. Starting with a clue that the inability to synthesize carnitine might be a risk factor for autism, we are proposing that carnitine in the brain, deficiency of carnitine in the brain, may be a more common cause of autism. One aspect of autism that, uh, is that it affects boys more than girls. This is particularly true if one focuses on children with a normal physical examination and a normal brain imaging study. Children of this type make up, about, up a 20 to 25 percent of all autism and male-female ratio for this group can be as much as uh, 10 to 1 or even 20 to 1. We suggest that uh, a large fraction of this subgroup might have autism caused by brain carnitine deficiency. I want to mention how the blood-brain barrier fits into this story. The body has two ways to deliver carnitine to the brain. It is able to take carnitine from the blood and move it to the brain. It, this uh, is called transport across the blood-brain barrier. In addition, the brain is able to synthesize carnitine from other nutritional building blocks. Males with TMLHE deficiency have a block in this synthesis machinery. So when and why uh, would brain carnitine deficiency arise in a relatively normal healthy infant? Most infants are born with adequate uh, carnitine stores. Human breast milk, commercial infant formulas, and cow's milk all have generous amounts of carnitine, so infants are protected from the deficiency so long as milk or formula make up 100% uh, of their nutrition. Juices and solid foods are usually started between four to eight months of age. In many cultures, the first non-milk foods are fruits, uh, juices, cereals, and vegetables, all of which contain almost no carnitine, and meats are introduced later. Animal sources of food such as eggs, dairy, and uh, meat all have more substantial amounts of carnitine. So when solid foods are added to the diet, the intake of carnitine drops in proportion to the reduction of milk in the, in the diet. D thus the dietary changes uh, at four to eight months of age might uh, lead to development of autism uh, findings over the following 12 to 24 months. We are proposing that this carnitine deficiency would uh, evolve from a gene-environment interaction. There are dozens of genes that affect the metabolism of carnitine in the body, but diet is an equally important variable in our thinking. Other non-genetic factors could also be important, including many medications and minor illnesses, especially gastrointestinal illnesses that might deplete uh, carnitine in the body. An important question grows out of this hypothesis is whether uh, there should be a recommended daily allowance, or RDA, for carnitine in the normal infant diet. Medical experts were asked to make a recommendation uh, on this question in the 1980s, and the recommendation was that no RDA was necessary, in part because humans can synthesize carnitine. We now know that one in 350 males cannot synthesize carnitine. More importantly, just because humans can synthesize a nutrient does not mean that the body will always synthesize enough for optimal growth and development, as is the case for vitamin D. How can this hypothesis be tested? There are data from the Baby Siblings Research Consortium that the recurrence risk in families who already have one child with a milder form of autism is often quite high, especially if the new infant is a male. Families such as this could be enrolled in a study to determine whether supplementation with carnitine will reduce the frequency of autism in the new siblings. If this hypothesis is correct, one option could be to fortify all baby foods such as fruits, cereals, and vegetables with carnitine during the production process. Thank you.